Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes. Mr. Hayes' world of stats. Actually, Mr. Hayes' world of math. Um, we're back. We got two more sets of videos that we're going to talk about the difference of proportions and how we test for that. And then we're going to talk about, um, at the very end of this unit, we're going to talk about a couple of instances about what happens when that other 5% happens. But before we get into that, we are going to switch over here and we are going to go into... Oops, our dog is still here. Sorry. All right. So, the Mythbusters, if you remember, back on Discovery Channel was a show where um, Jamie and Adam would go through and they would test various myths. And one of them that they did was is yawning contagious. And I'll throw the link to the initial part of the video down below um, so you can watch it on your own time. No need to take up two minutes of time right now. Um, but what they ended up doing was this. They um, had 34 subjects and they monitored, the, monitored, monitored them for a fixed period of time. And they were giving a yawn seat. So one of the experimenters came in, yawned, and then left. And they tried to, then they kept track of, did that actually make the people who saw the yawn, yawn? And so they went through, and 34 of them were giving the yawn seed um, by the experimenters, and 16 were not. And so the first question that we asked down here is kind of a review, draw an outline of the Mythbusters experiment. And so the setup should look like this. We've got 50 subjects. We randomly assign them to a group, group one and group two. Group one was given a yawn seed, group two was given no yawn seed, and then we compared the proportions of yawners at the end. All right. Now, here is what the Mythbusters got. So out of their 34 people who had a yawn seed, 10 of them yawned, 24 did not. Out of the 16 who did not get a yawn seed, four of them yawned in the time that they were being observed. And so that gave a total of 14 out of 50. So that's going to go down here, and the proportion of people who yawned, or yes, the yawn seed who did get people who yawned, um, that was 10 out of 34. And so that's 29%, and the true proportion of no yawn seed people who yawned was um, p hat of 2, and then that's 4 out of 16, that's 25%. So then the question is, what's the difference of those proportions? 29 minus 25% gives us a 4% difference. So does this give us some data to provide to provide some evidence? Sorry, does this data give us some evidence to provide that yawning is contagious? And the answer is yeah. You know, given the people who had the yawn seed yawned more than the people who weren't given the yawn seed, um, there's some evidence there. Is it convincing evidence? That's yet to be seen. But there is at least something there. 29 is bigger than 25. So it's at least worth another look. Now, in the video, Adam and Jamie used the data to conclude that yawning was contagious. The question is, would you agree? Now, obviously, this part right here, you guys would be doing in class by yourself. So the answers may go back and forth. But the big question there then becomes, you know, 4% difference isn't that big of a deal. Okay? So it could have just happened purely by chance. Okay? And so, again, some of this is going to be based upon, you know, from your random assignment. What would happen if some of those people who yawned, who were part of the yawn seed, were in the other group? Okay? So that's something that we're going to have to explore. And that's what the whole second page is. We kind of go through and do a simulation because that's what we do. So that simulation is going to look something like this. If I can get my pages lined up correctly. Now, there is a beautiful Desmos lesson, and I'll link to that down below too. Um, I'm forgetting who made it, but if you're watching, thank you very much. And it does lay out very nicely, and it actually also takes care. Normally, what would end up happening is that you would have 50 cards, and in those cards, it would say yawner or non-yawner, okay? And then you would just randomly assign, and you put them in two different piles. You'd put some in the yawn seed pile and some in the non-yawn seed pile, and then you just count how many yawners did you have in each group, all right? So you'd go through and do that. So you'd shuffle the card, one group of 34, one group of 16, record the proportion. So I don't have this written down here because obviously these things are going to be different. It could be different depending upon what you come up with. But what like my cl class did is they came up with a percentage here, percentage here, and then they subtracted over here. So they had three different setups for that. And then we posted it in a dot plot. Why? Because that is what we do. All right. Now the other thing to remember here is this is where the Mythbusters were.
So that's the Mythbusters result, is right there at 4%. And so now what's going to end up happening here is the question is, well, how much of our data fell in that group? And so for ours, here over, we had, what is it, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I had 12 out of 27 in this case, which is 44% of our data was what the Mythbusters saw or more extreme. Which, if we already know from what we were doing about testing before, 44% is definitely bigger than 5%. So we kind of have evidence here saying that, yeah, I shouldn't say evidence here. We don't have convincing evidence that yawning is contagious would be the better way of saying it. My apologies to those of you who are stats teachers listening. Um, so 12 out of 27 is 44%, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And up here, our null hypothesis was saying there is no difference between the two of them. Yawning is not contagious. I think I overlooked that. My apologies. Um, there is a 44% probability of getting that the difference between the two proportions of yawn seed to non-yawn seed is 4% or greater, purely by chance, because that's what we did here. We just randomly put the cards together, spread them out, boom, and we're done. Okay. So the conclusion, what can we draw about this? Well, very simply, because 44% is bigger than 5%, and remember 5% is kind of just that basic level that we use unless told otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And we do not have convincing evidence that yawning is contagious. We basically busted the Mythbusters. So we're going to start to formalize this in the next one. We're going to kind of lay out what the first two steps are. Tomorrow, or in the next video, depending upon how you're pacing this, we're going to kind of wrap everything all up. And again, a lot of the same things. But there are some differences if you're talking about if you're setting up an experiment versus going through and randomly picking people out of, um, out of a group. So anyway, we'll see you in a few minutes. Talk to you soon.